Great. I guess there are very many talks about engineering and technology and all those cool new things which are developed as part of the open SUSE community as well as outside all day. We thought we'd do a little bit something different and talk a little bit about open source product management as well as open source project management and many other things. So, as you mostly are engineers, before I introduce myself to the people who don't know me, maybe let me just start asking, you see the title, yeah? is open source product management, well, op, op, in product management for open source projects before the presentation. Do you think it's a need? Hands up. My product management colleagues at least are with me on that. Who thinks it's a pain? Okay, while I was there, it was a pain. I do realize that, yes. <laughs> but it seems nobody thinks it's a pain. That's actually a great start. So <clears throat> it seems some ideas have clearly developed of that. I can, I must say, at the very beginning, with many engineers, quite some people thought it is quite a pain. Yeah. And who thinks it's completely useless? Okay, nobody. Great. So I think we have a great start here. So, I brought Patrick Meyer with me. He's our product manager at OwnCloud, and there's a little bit of an interesting story behind that, because about a year ago, he was here at the conference talking to the OwnCloud people, and then he applied as a trainee, did his master since, and is our official full-time product manager since a couple of months now. So, that's Patrick, and we started kind of here, and therefore I thought, it's a great idea if we do it uh, together because when he started and I'm doing product management for a very, very long time, I'm responsible at OwnCloud for products as well as technologies. I'm Holger Dyroff. I was at SUSE a very, very long time before that, so a lot of the people here know me. But at OwnCloud, I really focus on products as well as technologies. and. When Patrick started, we of course had several discussions about the questions of what does product management mean? How do we do project and product management kind of in an environment where a lot of engineers do whatever they want, in an environment where volunteers just come from the outside and apply the newest feature they thought about yesterday? So quite some of what we present here came out of these discussions, but then of course some of it was also put recently together for you to chat with us. And with that, let me give it to Patrick. Yeah, thank you. So uh, welcome to our talk also from my side. Um, yeah, product management in open source projects, need pain or useless. So when preparing for our talk today, uh, we read some articles, we had discussions, and yeah, we quickly realized that um, even though we might be talking about one and the same software, that uh, it's inevitable to uh, differentiate between the open source project and uh, the product, because those are in fact two yeah, really distinct things with different stakeholders and different goals. So, therefore, uh, I wanted to quickly take a look uh, at both to discover the goals and also where they might differ. So, what are open source projects? How are they characterized? What are the goals and what are the typical outcomes? So, <clears throat> first, they typically consist of volunteers that have some interest in, in the topic and therefore engage with it. So, there's a lot of enthusiasm, especially in the beginning of such projects, and also enthusiasm that you can feel on conferences like today. So, people are creative. They want to expand their horizons. They want to think around the corner. So, it's a lot, about, uh, uh, a lot about learning and fun as well. So, because everybody can join, no matter on qualification or skill level. So. It's, that's great because it brings people together and also provides a platform for yeah, mutual inspiration and exchange. So it's about doing things together with rather flat hierarchies and yeah, also rather quick decision making. 
So in comparison with closed source product, uh, projects, it's also based on the belief that the involvement of a lot of people uh, drives the product, project into the right decision, uh, direction. Sorry. Um, this is what I mean with the term law of large numbers. So it, the, the term actually originates from statistics and describes uh, the result of doing an experiment several times. So if you do that, the average result uh, should be, um, or des describes, is, is close to the expectation. So if you pair that with um, the, the device, diversity in opinions and characteristics of different actors in the project, um, um, you have the assumption that this leads to great software that uh, fulfills the needs for at least a large part of people, sooner or later. So putting all this together, this drives uh, innovation by uniting various kinds of views and opinions um, of different people, and as a result, produces a common good that yeah, is done from the people for the people. So, yeah, actually awesome so far. Really cool. But, <clears throat> yeah, a motivated start of such projects uh, is many times followed by dif difficult decisions that may, yeah, disappoint some people. And, yeah, as time is scarce and uh, people need to pay their bills, of course, um, many great projects experience some kind of stagnation at some point. So, at this point, the product comes into play. So as a possible so solution to uh, turn the corner and bring movement back to the project. So <clears throat> products always depend on their ability to, to attract customers and also to prevail in competition. So customers put up certain requirements on software, they need good and intuitive uh, usability for even for less experienced users. And yeah, stability is always at the heart of um, good, or at the heart of the expe expectation of a customer of good software. So therefore, it's also inevitable to maintain excellent QA. And yeah, furthermore, uh, customers demand professional support and also maintenance should be as easy as possible or as effortless as possible, so to say. So, <clears throat> if you know that, um, you also may can imagine that the people who derive the project uh, product from the project um, experience some kind of pressure from the markets, from the customers. So, this pressure naturally brings movement into the product, as bills may only be paid when customers are happy. To make customers happy, the product needs to fulfill certain requirements in um, a certain quality and within a certain time frame, of course. So, <clears throat> in the best case, the project is uh, a basis for the product, and both should profit from each other in a balanced way. So, <clears throat> for this, um, you take the project at some point and professionalize it to meet the requirements I just uh, tried to elaborate on. So, yeah, you attract customers uh, with marketing efforts and, yeah, sell the product, build up a standing in the market. Um, and if this works out nicely, you attract customers. Those customers um, generate revenue or the product generates revenue through the customers, which you can then use to reinvest into the product. So this, on the one hand, drives momentum back to the pro project as contributions are made and also issues are tackled that maybe people in the project don't want to get their hands on as they're just not interested in it. So <clears throat> also stability is a key criteria for products and, and these efforts for stability go back to the project, which benefits contributors um, as well, or users, as contributors may, might not have the highest priority on stability, but uh, users always 
like a product that works seamlessly out of the box. So the project, again, enjoys freedom in two ways. So on the one hand, people can use it, they can do whatever they want with it, and on the other hand, people should also be free in their way of thinking. So in their way of thinking about the future of the software, which again drives innovation or even incubation, um, which then comes back to the product where it's really needed because yeah, you have competitions and other project, uh, products improve as well. So <clears throat> this again attracts more customers in the best case and stabilizes or even increases your revenue. So then the circle starts from the beginning. So from iteration to iteration, um, the product and therefore also the project uh, improve, which in the end creates value for every uh, involved party. So <clears throat> what I just explained is a model that works in a perfect world. In reality, of course, there are obstacles. So obstacles that the project and also the product need to consider. So when we thought about it and discussed, um, many questions came up to our mind. So <clears throat> when looking at the amount of feature requests that a, a community users put up uh, in an open source project, you really need to ask yourself, who should do all this? So if you take, for, ex if you take for example, um, our GitHub core repo from OnCloud, you have around 1,500, 1,600 even open tickets, from which more than 1,000 are feature requests. And yeah, those are mainly ideas or concepts, but without anyone chiming in and yeah, offering real development skills. So, <clears throat> and that's only one repository, we also have several others. So, and on the other hand, customer feature requests are also often very specific, um, but missing a holistic view on the product. So, <clears throat> this is the other side. So, customers are users in the end that have specific views on, cer on certain things, but they are not experts in software design and also not in user experience. So <clears throat> they require certain things like, for example, they need a red warning message for some certain feature. Then the next customer comes and yeah, he needs the same, but he needs it in green. And community users don't need a warning message at all because they are technical people and they know what, they know what they're doing. So yeah. Which lets us come to the next point, priorities. Um, in the whole jungle of feature requests between project on the one hand and product on the other hand, how should priorities be set? Should you only do exactly what your customers require as they pay your bills? Or would it even be better just letting the project fly and yeah, maybe implement a solution that is more holistic and also solves the requests of your customers. And even worse, how to handle contrary requests. So what if a customer comes up with a requirement that is an absolute no-go for the project or vice versa? How do you handle this? So you can spend a lot of time on trying to find a solution that fits for both, but maybe you don't have that time because you have to do a hundred other things as well. So in the end, it's customers that decide on the success of a product as they pay the wages of the people that create the product. And yeah, if the product fails, you're back with the project. And yeah, which, which then might also lose momentum or stagnate or get forked and the circle starts from the beginning. So <clears throat> in addition, you have different kinds of focus where most developers and users in projects are mainly interested in small deployments like 
with a few users, maybe on a Raspberry Pi in, in the sense of own cloud, at least. Um, the product needs a totally different focus as it needs to uh, fulfill the needs of really large enterprises. So, and most volunteers develop exactly what they need, what they want, what they're interested in. And they might not even think of a solution that can scale for scenarios with lots of thousands of users. So, and actually this is fine, but only as far as it doesn't stand in the way of the product. So, in the end, who's in the driver's seat? Is it customers? Is it contributors of the project? Or users? We can't really say as this needs to be thought of in every single case. Therefore, you need someone balancing those interests of different parties and stakeholders also. Many, many questions and even more issues come up when we look at open source. Is it a business model? Is it a development model? Is it something where the product we are putting together, are we distributing it in an open source way and with an open source license? Or are we putting some things on top of it, which is then distributed as our product? Are we putting things on the side? Do we maybe host the project in the cloud as software as a service and call that our product? So there are many, many different things to think about. And when we look at the reality of open source and at the largest open source companies around the globe, then we see that almost all of them have answered for themselves this question. Open source is not a business model. They're not distributing the product they have in an open source way and with an open source license. So when we look at SUSE Linux Enterprise Server, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, what Cloudera does, what Hortonworks does, probably some of the largest open source companies in the world, besides that Google, Amazon, and all of them are doing a lot of open source projects, but the product is always not distributed with an open source license. Maybe things underneath, but the product itself is very, very often protected. So often enough, it's not sufficient to just deliver services and support around the project, which means you need to define your product. You need to have somebody to do that. When we look at innovation, which happens at early stages, which comes up from engineers, from the community, which is put there, it's very often cool but it does not necessarily scale to the level we require at the customer basis, where we have thousands of servers, where we have many, many, maybe even millions of users. And probably the most um, uh, fights go around user interfaces. User interfaces and successful open source projects are not very many, to be honest. We have many, many user interfaces out there, but there are not many successful projects with good user interfaces and with good end user contact. When we look at the Linux desktop, that's probably the one thing we all get as a critique that it continues to be non usable, that it continues to be challenging in parts, that I still cannot get my printer automatically detected, which I think I'm now saying at least since 1998. Um, and so there are some things which still don't work. And user interfaces is always a big fight. It's also a big fight in regards of what should be shown in the user interface as configuration options. So when we leave the project in a free flow, what we often get is additional configuration options in the user interface. They pile up to five, then somebody puts a button there and says, oh, those three are important, and here is the button where you can get to the other 20. Yeah, and that continues and continues and continues. And in our special case where OwnCloud is kind of a server side situation, which however is used by end users, we also have the fun part that administrators want to give some certain freedoms to their users and some freedoms they want to take away. As an example, when somebody uses the collaborative editing functions of Collabora Online, 
in his cloud system web browser, there are administrators at the customer side who say, oh, but he can download from this web interface. He shouldn't be able to do that. I want him to just view, I want him to just edit. And then we have, again, config functions and config options, which can be different. So lots of challenges, lots of issues. So let's have a look how different projects have gone after that and which projects um, are there and have tried to solve that. And the solution to that has been very, very diverse. When I looked at the different open source projects, I could almost not find some who are identical in regards of how they think about community management, pro open source project management, and or product management. Of course, that comes from the diversity of open source projects overall. Let me start with OpenStack, where you have probably about a hundred different vendors who came together in an OpenStack foundation from a history of a product originally developed at one large organization called Rackspace, put out there in um, the open as an open source project joined by many, many organizations who hired engineers to come up there. So what what they did is, because they couldn't agree on like one product management, OpenStack has, is, is also a project, the products are really sold by the organizations like SUSE, Red Hat or others, or are just used internally at the large operators. So they built a product working group, which has 100 members, and of those 100 members, there are three or four speakers who kind of represent the product view to the overall large project. And they are focusing on things like socializing the roadmap, cho um, choosing themes and other things. But then again, I think with 100 people, there's also lots of discussions rather than maybe getting work done. But as I'm not part of the community, I don't know this much. When we look at the Linux kernel, very, very different. To my understanding, the Linux kernel has neither a community manager nor a project manager nor a marketing manager or something like that. It certainly has a very, very well-willing dictator and then some maintainers um, in the line. And then there is no, not really a product around the Linux kernel, right? There are Linux distributions, which consist of many, many, many other things, about a thousand different packages in the end of the day. And of course, there are product managers at the distributors for those, but the Linux kernel itself doesn't really have that and doesn't really need that. When we look at Apache, the Apache web server, besides the Apache Foundation, which got his name, which happens to be a very, very large community organization with many, many different projects. The Apache web server itself doesn't really have a whole lot of that. They have a couple of engineers who are working on things, but they seem to lack any type of guidance or marketing, and I couldn't find a product. In the past, I think a couple of people tried to do commercial add-ons to Apache or so, but that didn't really happen, that really didn't go well, so it came all back to being just a project. Very different to Nginx. Nginx happens to be an original invention from a sharp guy, but then he founded a company. A company which does an Nginx product and at least what I'm seeing right now seems to tell me that there is way more marketing, way more knowledge going on around Nginx, way more direction, way more adoption towards cloud and containers and all of those modern things, which if I look at Apache, I'm not sure, maybe it happens, then I don't see it and the message doesn't arrive at me. And when I look at customers and users, there seems to be some trend towards Engine X, and maybe that project management and product management is part of what that success entails. So at OwnCloud, don't want to lose too much words on it, but we have a rather strict product management. We look at own cloud from a, from a product standpoint to the outside. Many, many customer requests, of course, Patrick was already going into some of them. 
And then I thought, I look at another one which has a strong user interface. So other than OwnCloud, all of the above, they don't really have something an end user would interact with. So I thought I picked the most successful one, at least I'm aware of, in regards of open source projects which a end user touches, which is LibreOffice. At LibreOffice, it's also many, many engineers. They have the Document Foundation as an organization above them, which influences and steers quite some things. But I couldn't really find people who are responsible for like product management. Why? Because of course LibreOffice is a foundation. They don't have something to sell. They have users out there. They have lots of users worldwide. The adoption is very nice. But then when we look at the overall end users in corporations, it seems the adoption is maybe also not so much liked by many people. There are some products behind that, like Collabora is selling a Collabora office suite, which then again is a product, but the influence of that product manager, which nah, not, not really one there, to be honest, it's more like um, they're taking the upstream project and putting it out there and focus on marketing of their brand, but not so much designing what upstream the product does. So when we look at city of Munich, other things, it seems that the end users somehow are not happy with this type of user interface at this time. So it seems around user interfaces, it's even more chilling. And unfortunately, of course, I don't have any good, uh, perfect answers how to do those things better. Next slide. So, however, I think I have some definition of what open source product management, when we are talking about a product and not a project we should do. And I think some of that is lacking on some of the others. So when we look at product management, we always need to focus on the market first. Market means all the people who are not using the product today, which in most cases are way more people than the number of users of today's project. When we look at LibreOffice, that would actually mean to look at everybody else who is using Office Suites, who is maybe already moving to something else. And when we look at Office, they're already moving to those online systems. Yeah? They have moved to Google Drive for a while, to Google Office for a while. They have moved to Office 365, provided guidance by very strong corporations, and the users have followed, and the market has followed that guidance, and maybe some of the projects have stayed behind a little, but that's what product management is supposed to do. Look at the market, look at the future, and early enough bring the right themes into the project in order to make sure that we don't miss the market, that we follow this market going forward. We need to look at competition, that's obvious. We absolutely and need to look at customers, but then you can go on very, very tricky paths because the customers, they have certain things in mind about their usage of your product today. They seldomly think very much in the futures. You have engineers you have to deal with. They are either paid, then they're really your engineers, or they are volunteers and unpaid and just do what um, they want. And they can at any time provide their odd feature or their nice feature and you just have it. And sometimes you get this cool feature maybe two days before the release is planned and then you have to figure around, um, update your what's new in the offering, etc., which can be a little bit stressful at times and certainly goes above of your planning. Yeah, that's kind of where we sit on that and what open source product management is about. Next slide. Patrick. Um, so what should open source product management actually do in my mind? And we identified a couple of things which seem to really make sense. So finding as well as declaring themes for today's offering as well as for the future offering socialize the roadmap. And we say socialize here because 
you cannot really steer the roadmap so much because there are so many volunteers who do different things. So you socialize it, right? You have to discuss it. You have to bring it out there. You have to get the input from the people. You have to find alignment around features. When you want to get certain things done, where you don't have enough paid engineers for in your product, you have to take care that you reach outside and uh, find other people who want to do this thing together with you. So when you find this alignment, you have a way better chance of succeeding. Which means you have to foster a democratic process for such decision making. Of course, often enough in those projects, there is kind of a benevolent dictator there, but then that's also risky, yeah, because seldom this one scales, and what you do when he runs away? Yeah, that's always a great question. With that, back to Patrick. Yes, so <clears throat> we debated a lot. We did research on the topic um, of product management between open source projects and products. And yeah, this is what we've learned. So open source projects need freedom. They don't need management. So to be able to prosper and to develop great ideas that lead to innovation, open source projects uh, need enough space and freedom. So it's very inhibiting if you put constraints upon people um, or projects as people might not evolve and yeah, are not able to have fun with their contributions. Product management, on the other hand, is a need for products. As the name says, it's, it's a real need as you have many different stakeholders and interests that need to be balanced. And yeah, in order to come to something like a win-win situation for all involved parties. So projects then rather need community management and or community marketing. So this is to socialize and connect the various parties, attract others, and yeah, also get movement into the thing. So <clears throat> remember, it's, it's not only code that is a contribution. Word of mouth um, has value as well, and there, you need a lot, of, a lot more than only code to get an open source project running. So <clears throat> apart from that, we leave you with some open questions on purpose as yeah, most of you have some kind of relation to open source projects and also to products. And yeah, we don't have a solution to all the questions and it would also be kind of overconfident if we thought we had. So yeah, think about it. And yeah, if you want to discuss with us, you can chat with us later or reach out to us via mail. And yeah, have a good lunch. Thank you. Thank you so much.